Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Frodman, last month, the CFPB announced the appointment of Robert Cameron to serve as the private loan ombudsman. Until recently, Mr. Cameron has been Deputy Chief Counsel and Vice President of Enterprise Compliance at the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistant Authority. In a statement, you were quoted as calling Mr. Cameron's appointment outrageous. Can you elaborate on your statement and explain why you believe his appointment is outrageous? So it's outrageous, but not surprising. Um, we have a Secretary of Education who has used every tool at her disposal to shield student loan companies from accountability. And now the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has hired as the top student loan official uh, someone from compliance at a, a, a company that is at the center of every scandal that has ripped off borrowers for a decade. So we have heard a lot today about blaming borrowers or blaming Congress. Congress or borrowers did not force Sally May to rip off 77,000 service members. Congress and borrowers didn't force ACS to lie to public servants. Congress and borrowers didn't force public teachers to have their loans turned to grants in violation of their rights. And I think what is happening across this country is that people took on debt to try to get a better life for them and their families, and some of the largest financial services companies in America have been ripping them off for too long. And I think the bills before this committee and this hearing shows that those days need to end. And do you have any concern that the Trump administration only seems to focus on private student loan services? So absolutely. I think what we have seen now is private sector companies uh, where you have borrowers in all of your states who have alleged that they've been ripped off. And this administration has used every tool at their disposals to say that the federal government can't oversee these companies, your state attorney generals can't oversee these companies. If this was seven years ago and Arne Duncan told your state AGs that he couldn't investigate, that they were unable to investigate a company for ripping off service members, mm -hmm. you would be outraged and you should be. But that is what is happening today, is the federal government is trying to shield private sector account private sector companies from accountability for ripping off millions of people. Ms. Hugh, do you have any comment? I absolutely, sorry. Um, I absolutely ag agree. Um, you know, the fact that the Department of Education is shielding um, servicers from liability, both from the state AGs and from private borrowers who are attempting to, uh, to protect their own rights, as I think is outrageous, as Mr. Frotman said, and I think that this committee, it, why it's so important for the Borrower Bill of Rights and the other bills that this committee is considering today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Harrington, in May, the Fed produced a report on the economic well-being of U.S. households in 2018, which, among other things, discusses the state of student loans and other educational debt on the U.S. economy. The report found that the individuals who did not complete their degree or who attended a for-profit institution are more likely to struggle with repayment than those who completed a degree from a public or private not-for-profit institution, even including those who took on relatively large amounts of debt. Can you have any sense as to why this is the case? Absolutely. So uh, non-completion is a big problem in this country, particularly, as you mentioned, the for-profit college industry. And so what you have is students who have the debt but not the degree. So they don't have the ability to then translate that into the job or the income increase that they hoped because they were unable to complete. As soon as they're unable to complete for various reasons, it's disproportionately a problem for low-income consumers who always low-income students who have a lot of other things that they are battling as they are trying to attend college. They're caretakers, they're single parents, they have, um, they have to have a job as well. So we have to be cognizant of the fact that that is absolutely a big issue and there's a big issue particularly in the for-profit college sector. Thank you. I yield back.